Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So I've got plenty here, I'm gonna jump right in. So I'm gonna start with this one here. This is a fragrance from Benetton, and this is called Hot. This is a fragrance that was in my last um, perfumes that I need to show more love to, and I made sure that I gave this some love before I put it away. Um, this is a really, really good uh, smell-alike of Chanel Allure. Um, it's not quite as rich, it's not as complex smelling, um, it's not Allure. It's definitely a less expensive smell-alike of it, but it's really, really close. Um, if you really love Allure but you don't love the price tag, I think this is a great alternative. This is like a 10 eight to ten dollar perfume um it performs like an eight to ten dollar perfume though you are going to have to reapply this probably every couple to few hours um which for this is a huge bottle it's like a 3.4 ounce bottle and for eight to ten dollars i don't think it's that serious to have to reapply it a ton um i love it it's perfect for this time of year it's warm it's aldehydic it's a little spicy it's a little floral it's a little bit um, ambery. It's just a really beautiful, warm fragrance, and I love it. It 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 does come in a different bottle now, and like I said, in, I think the last video I talked about when they rebottle things a lot of the time, or when they repackage a lot of the time, they reformulate as well. I have no idea what the new um, formulation is like if they did reformulate it. Um, I don't know what it's like in that new bottle, but maybe somebody out there has tried the new bottle or tried the new formulation and can let us know. Um, I'm not sure, but I know if you find this one with this little cute little tap um, cap, which if you turn it one way, it turns it off. And when you turn it the other way, it turns it on. Um, it's fantastic. So anyways, um, that is Benetton Hot. Okay, next, I haven't worn this fragrance in so long. Um, I think I, I think I had this in maybe the second video I, I did about fragrances that I needed to give more love to. This is the original formulation of Zara Rich Warm Addictive. This is a really beautiful, technically it's a men's fragrance. It's a tobacco, sweet tobacco, coconut, and honey. It's really, really gorgeous. This to me is completely unisex though. I don't think it leans masculine at all. Um, I think it smells amazing on men. My husband has used this as much as I have and it smells really, really good on a, on a man. It smells really good on me. I don't get very good performance out of it. So I do have this oil here. This is from, um, I think this is from Yasmeen. I will link this for you. It is from Triple Traders. You can pick it up for really reasonably. Um, this is called Burly Tobac, and this is basically like a dupe oil of Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. So I put this on first, and then I layered the Zara Rich Warm Addictive over it, and it was an incredible combination. Um, this gave a little bit more depth to this. Um, this is... It's really nice, but it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. It really is just kind of like a thin, sweet, tobacco, honey, coconut fragrance. Um, it doesn't have much depth to it at all. This oil, though, has a lot of depth to it. Yeah, it's just a lot more complex. It's a little bit heavier. It still has about the same amount of sweetness, so it doesn't really add, I would say, sweetness but it just adds some depth to it. It's really nice. Um, it was a really nice combination and the oil definitely helped the perfume to hang around a lot longer than it normally would have. Um, normally I can get maybe two or three hours out of this fragrance, but with the oil, I was able to get a good six or seven hours. Um, it was super, super nice. I really like this combination. So um, I've heard that the new formulation is not as good as this one. I haven't smelled it though, so. Anyways, that is the old formulation of Zara Rich Warm Addictive, and I think this is a Yasmin oil called Burly Tobac, and I think you can get it on Triple Traders, I know that. Okay, next, this next one, I was so sad about this because this used to perform really, really well on me, and this does not perform well on me at all anymore. Um, this is Police Forbidden. 
This is an incredibly difficult perfume to get your hands on these days. Um, it gets compared to Hypnotic Poison, but this is a lot sweeter than Hypnotic Poison, and it's got a ton more almond in it. It's really, really almond heavy. It's like a marzipan kind of perfume. It smells like an almond dessert. It's really beautiful, kind of slightly powdery, sweet almond paste. It's gorgeous. Um, sadly, I think I was able to smell this on me for maybe like an hour. Um, other people may have been able to smell it on me longer than that. I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna have to try it again and and I'll ask the people around me to kind of keep up with <laughs> what it's doing. If you can smell it, um, it might have just been a me problem. I'm not totally sure. But I can smell it perfectly fine in the bottle. I'm not like a nosmic to it or anything and it didn't used to be like this on me, but uh, my skin chemistry has changed recently. Like I think it was maybe back in September that I really started to notice. Um, and sadly, this is one of the, yeah, this is I think gonna be one of the casualties, but I don't care. I love this fragrance. I will never let it go. So I will never declutter this or anything. Um, I just, it's too beautiful to ever declutter. Even if I can't smell it, I'll still wear it. I love it. Um, so, but anyways, that is Police Forbidden. Okay, next. I wore this one to bed and I actually leave this out and I wear this to bed quite often. This is a fragrance from Lush and this is a solid perfume and this is called I'm Home. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I can't remember if this is the one. I have this and I have cardamom coffee and they're, they're kind of similar to each other. This one is a little bit more milky smelling though. It's, but they're both like creamy, sweet, spiced fragrances. But this one is milky. It's like a milky sweet cream. That's exactly what it smells like, milky sweet cream. It's so good. The, this is like fully expired too. Um, this expired January 20th of 2020. I've had these forever. Um, I ordered them both at the same time and I've had them forever. But, and yeah, it's been um, expired forever, but it's it still smells perfect. It doesn't smell any different. It doesn't smell like it's like rancid or like anything is really weird with it. It's hard to use a ton of these though. And I, like I said, I do use these at night a lot. Even if I layer another perfume over it, I will put these on a lot. Um, yeah, they live out. I, but I adore this. I think it's hilarious though that it's been expired for four years, <laughs> almost four years now, and it's still going strong. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I get a lot of questions about perfume and how long it can be kept and keep it until it goes bad. Keep it until the smell, like, physically changes and you can tell that it's bad. If it doesn't smell bad, it's not bad. And Lush uses really, really good materials, which is, I think, why this is, and I'm surprised because it's probably in like shea butter. It, it feels like it's in shea butter or something, um, but it's still perfect, thank goodness, because I love the way this smells. This, the older it gets, the better it performs too. When I first got these, um, I didn't use them a whole lot because they didn't perform well at all. I would put them on and I could, I would smell them for, I don't know, maybe like 30 minutes to an hour, and then they would be completely gone. So I put them away for a really long time, and I pulled them out maybe a year ago, and I have never talked about them. Like, I, don't, I forget that I even have them, really. But yeah, I just, I absolutely love it. It's so good. I'm gonna stop gushing about it, but that is a fragrance called I'm Home from Lush, and it is so spectacular. Okay. Um, before I get back into full bottles, I tested a couple of the little samples that Sweet Susan sent over. Um, this is, uh, these are a couple from the Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab samples that she sent. The first one is called Ghost Milk, and I tested both of these in the evening. This one, I did not have to put much on at all. You can see the little dram is still, and I think these are one mil. I'm pretty sure these are little one mil drams. And this thing is almost completely full still. Um, I put it on all over. Like, I dipped my finger in it and I put it on all over. And it was really, really strong for, I don't know, probably two hours at least. Like, really strong projecting, like, 
a huge scent bubble around me and I loved it. This is like a, um, I always have a hard time with these indie houses, like picking out specific notes. Um, it's sweet, spiced, kind of vanillic. And that's really all I can say. Like a really sweet, spiced, kind of milky or vanillic type scent. It's really, really nice. I'll have the notes on the screen for you, but I really love this one. Um, it's really yummy. Would I want a full bottle? No, because I've got other things from Indie Houses in my collection like this. Um, that's the thing with Indie Houses. I think a lot of them create similar fragrances, but I think all of them do certain fragrances really well. And I think that they all have their certain fragrances that they're like really known for. Um, but I wouldn't say that this is probably one for this house, if that makes sense, because I've, I've definitely smelled this scent profile before. Um, I really like it though. It was, it's a super nice fragrance, great for this time of year. Um, and I will definitely enjoy my little sample of it. Okay, and then the next one I wore, this is different. Um, this one is called Invisible Man Milk. And um, this one, this one didn't perform as well as the other one. This one's a little bit more unique. This is kind of like a milky, like a clean, milky, warm, kind of like skin scent. That's what I get from it, like a milky, warm, clean skin scent. I really love this one. This one didn't perform as well as the Ghost Milk one. Um, I think I was able to smell this for a couple of hours and then it kind of just gradually faded away. Uh, but I really like this one. This one was like a definite winner. I feel like this one's a little bit more unique and um, This is one that I would definitely look into getting a full size of when if I ever go through this samples because um, I think these are oils and they these little one mil drams will last a really long time for me um, So anyways, that one is called invisible man milk. Okay next the scent that I wore on Christmas Day is this one here This is Majda Bakali and this is called fusion sacre and Oh my gosh, this is such an interesting scent. Um, I've never smelled anything else like this. This is like a, it's like a sweet borderline gourmand, but it's got this like kind of balsamy fur note in it. I think it actually has balsam fur in the base. So you get this kind of sweet, slash gourmand scent, but with this like coniferous kind of base. Now that balsam fur note does go away as this dries down on the skin. And when it does get to the deep dry down, you're left with this kind of, kind of slightly fresh, sweet, kind of like vanillic gourmand. It's really, really interesting. I love this one. It smells really, really good on me. This is one of those fragrances that just works for me and it just smells really nice on me. It was a perfect Christmas scent. It was it was just perfect for this year. I loved it so much and it got me through the entire holiday. Um, I did spray it on twice, so I sprayed it on before we left and then I sprayed it on when we got home and yeah, it was just, and I smelled like this all day and it was just beautiful. Um, I don't know if anybody else smelled it on me. I, it might've just been kind of like, I don't know. It might've just kind of worked with all of the smells that were going on on Christmas day. I'm not sure, but anyways, I loved it. It was great. And yeah, this is a little gem in my collection now. Thank you so much again to Tatiana for sending this over. Um, I love it. I will give it a really good home because it's just such a beauty in my collection. So anyways, that is from Majda Bakali and that is called Fusion Sacre. If you look it up on um, FragranceNet, it says Fusion Sacre uh, Blanc maybe, or I don't know, like there's a white version and a dark version. I'm not sure. 
Okay, next I pulled this baby out. This is uh, Latafa Nebris, and I. This has been a fragrance that since it started to get actually properly cold, I have not been able to put this down. Um, I love this. It's a pretty spot on dupe for the first Billie Eilish fragrance, but the first Billie Eilish fragrance was, in my opinion, was not done well. Um, something about the synthetic red berries in that fragrance was, it just was overpowering on my skin. And Nebris is not like that. This does have that red berry note in it, but it's not overpowering. This is more of a chocolate fragrance. Um, and you just kind of get the red berries in the background. And in fact, the red berries kind of smelled like, they kind of smell like stewed fruit more than they do red berries. So, um, Nebris, I have said it before and I'll say it again. This is what I wish Billie Eilish would have smelled like. Um, this is what I wanted it to smell like. This is like perfection. It's so good. It's become one of my favorite chocolate fragrances. Um, my beautiful friend Jacqueline sent me this. This is a 20 mil decant too. It's like in this little thing about the size of a credit card. And I don't know how they fit 20 mil of perfume in here, but they did. And this I think is gonna last me a long time, but I love this. I will be, as soon as I go through this 20 mil, I will be purchasing a full bottle of this. I love it, I can't put it down. Um, again, it's one of my favorite chocolate fragrances. And this I'm about, I will be filming also like my favorite finds of this year. And this is, you will definitely, we'll revisit this in that video because this is one of my favorite finds of 2023 for sure. I'm also gonna do a separate video of my most worn of 2023. Um, but anyways, yeah, I love this. It performs super well in the cold especially. You can wear this in the heat or the cold. It is fine in either. I love this in the cold though. I can definitely get a good like six, eight hours out of it. <sighs> and it's just beautiful, beautiful chocolatey, fruity goodness. It's amazing. So anyways, that is Latafa Nebris. I just ordered another Latafa fragrance. Um, I'm gonna be filming another, uh, uh, kind of like a small haul video, and I was hoping that my other fragrance that I ordered from um, Amazon would have gotten here, but it hasn't, sadly. So I will probably film just a whole video unboxing that and doing like a first impressions of it. Um, okay. And then I've got two more fragrances. The next one that I wore is this one here. This is Dior Midnight Poison. I This is another one that I put in my, I think my last fragrances that I need to give love to video because I hardly ever wear this. Um, it's one of those fragrances that because it's been discontinued, I just tend to not reach for it. Um, it's like a mental block that I have that if I know it's a fragrance that's really hard to find, that is that's been discontinued and that would be very difficult or very expensive to replace i just tend to not reach for it um but i did reach for this and i wore it gosh this thing is nuclear um i sprayed this on it maybe like 11 sometimes maybe between like 11 and 12 that the day that i wore this and i smelled like this until i washed it off the next day i mean transferred to pajamas like was in my hair, just strong, super strong. I love this though. This is like rose and patchouli. It's basically rose and patchouli. It's got some amber in the base, but I mostly get the rose and patchouli. It's a clean patchouli. It's not like a, it's not an earthy patchouli. It's a really bright, clean rose and patchouli scent, but also syrupy and dark, if that makes sense. Um, I love it. It's good. It's so good. I have smelled YSLL. Again, my beautiful friend Jacqueline sent me a decant of YSLL, and I have tested them side by side. They are very, very similar. There are definitely some differences. Um, L isn't quite as, if I remember correctly, um, it's not quite as bright smelling as this one, but they're very similar. If you like one, you will probably like the other. Um, but anyways, yeah, this is a beauty. It's nuclear and I'm glad that I gave it some love. This is Dior Midnight Poison. 
And then last but not least, I also pulled out my Dior Hypnotic Poison. This is the original formulation. Um, I get asked a lot how you can tell the difference between the original formulation and the new. The original has a red band around the neck. The new formulation has a gold band around the neck. Um, so if you're ever like on eBay or Mercari and you're looking for a bottle of Hypnotic Poison if, and you want the original formulation, just look for this red band. Um, I love this. Plus, this is in a plain red bottle. It And the new bottle is like ombre, red to black. So, um, yeah. Oh my gosh, I love this. It makes me sick that I threw away a bottle. I had a bottle of this from... 2007 I think about and like a dummy I threw it away thinking oh I've had it for like six or seven years it's probably gone bad this was like in 2011 2012 they actually I think it was after I had my daughter because I also I don't know I also didn't really like any of the perfumes that I had worn before having her after I had her it was like years before I wanted to smell them again and so I just tossed it like an idiot. Um, I think that it had been reformulated though. So that bottle that I had was a newer formulation than this, but not the formulation that you can get now because it smelled exactly like this. I mean, it smelled almost identical to the, the original formulation and it performed incredibly well. <laughs> Anyways, this lasts forever. You can spray this on one time and you're good for the whole day. That's part, the new formulation smells synthetic. It's not nearly as smooth as this one. Um, and it wears off in like an hour. It does not last any time at all. This one is just a masterpiece, perfection. Um, I am getting low on this. I probably have, I don't know. It was about 60% full last year and it's about 40% full now this year. So this is one that I am working through. I feel like too fast, but I'm just gonna continue to wear it and enjoy it. And I'll keep my eye out for another bottle. I do come across bottles of these, or bottles of the original formulation quite often. Um, so yeah, I just need to keep my eye out for another bottle of it. But anyways, that is the original Hypnotic Poison from Christian Dior. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are all of the fragrances that I wore last week. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.